How's it going everyone? Daniel Rodriguez here. It's time to review another movie. This one stars Zac Efron, Johnny Weston, Wes Bentley, John Bernthal, uh, a few other actresses and actors in here. Uh, this is a movie directed by Max Joseph, which he's been doing, I guess, a lot of, I looked it up, he's been doing a lot of documentaries instead of like a, like an actual, you know, film on the silver screen. And he does do the show Catfish on MTV. He's a co-host on there, Max Joseph. So if you know him, more, I guess from more MTV style. So uh, I guess he's known more around that world or to the younger generation who watch MTV. Uh, so this is his, I guess, I may be wrong, don't call me his first, I guess, bigger movie on the big screen uh, other than the documentary. It's a dramatic movie, uh, comedy, not, not really much of a comedy, but there's a few comedy bits in here. And uh, basically, it's a story about a, a young man who doesn't know he want he knows what he wants to do in life, but it's basically how do I be how do I become you know this person that I want to be like I have idols here and I want to go around the world and disc jockey and do all that. Synopsis down below, so you guys can just read that and then it's right there in the description. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a lot to go through. This is my non-spoiler review for. We are your friends. Always a rocky beginning. I hope you guys are having a great end of August and getting ready for the September month. Uh, real quick, I only had 13 people in my theater. I saw it at a 9 o'clock on a Thursday night, the opening night. 13 people, and they were all couples, literally each, every one of them, two, 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 two. And I was the only one that was there, like, alone, sitting in the middle, alone, with no one. So, <sighs> let's get right to it. This is a pros and cons, and then my final score, to, final score, excuse me, tell you whether or not you should go see this movie. So uh, let's get right to it. I'm not going to spoil nothing. I'm just going to, it's going to be real hard to explain without spoiling. So just bear with me here, guys. First off, I'm going to get started with the pros because I just want to get into this real quick and give you some good hopes and good ideas for this movie. Wes Bentley in this movie, he is awesome. Now, is he the greatest character in the world or something? No, but Wes Bentley is definitely, uh, I don't get to see him a lot in movies. Last time I saw him in something was American Horror Story Freak Show as more uh more drake but he doesn't come out of much movies as you know you want him to come out and so i think that's really cool that he was in here i thought he was going to have a small presence he had a big presence and that's what i love about this movie any scene with west bentley was fine with me made me smile even though if he's not the best person to be around in this movie he did make you smile every now and then the music in here i'm not a big techno guy not a big dubstep guy or um you know just that type of music the uh computer music i'm not into that and Neither was I. I'm sorry to hate or sorry to say names, but straight out of Compton, I was not into rap. I'm still not into rap, but I do listen to N.W.A. like every now and then. Like straight, I listen to the songs because they're really fun. And that kind of like okay, I don't listen to all rap. I just listen to N.W.A. now since straight out of Compton. Now for this movie, it's not like tomorrow. Oh, I'm gonna download some techno music and listen to it. You know, it's not like that where it inspired me. Like oh my god, techno music's the best. But if you're into this. If you're into that music, man, you're gonna love this movie uh, with the disc jockey. If you, I, I saw some people in the theater, about two or three, who are look like they're into that music. Or they're in California, and you know it's the land of hopes and dreams, and the beer and the whiskey and the porn stars and everything that is good in between and out. So that's basically where it is, man. That's where the that's and also Austin, but there's other places where music is made. Born Tennessee, and Hollywood's a place for anything, man. So the music in here was fine. I was. I was having my, I was trying not to do that, but I was trying to like get to the beat there because the beat is interesting. Uh, the, there is an artistic style in this movie, like where it turns animation, and that's all I'll say. There is just a scene, I was like, I wonder if this is going to be an artistic, and I was like, yeah, there it is. So if you watch this movie, it's a very obvious scene, and I was like, okay, I dig that, it's kind of cheesy, but you know, it's almost like Take On Me should be playing right now, and just having that, aha, uh -huh, so... 80s music for you younger generation. Uh, the friends in here, we have the three main friends, besides Zac Efron's character, Johnny Weston. We don't, I, we don't really, like, they say their names, but, like, I wish in the beginning he would have been like, this is this guy, this is Squirrel, this is this guy, like, there's a guy named Squirrel in there. Like, he should have introduced us, he said, like, oh, he's an actor and everything, but, like, he doesn't really dig deep into 
why, where they met, how they met, how long they've been together, you know, just small things that take a minute, less than a minute to explain, they don't explain it at all, and within the hour and 40 minutes of a movie, like, you know, the friends there, they do have different characteristics, and some work, some don't, uh, John Bernthal, I already forgot the name of his character because it's not that memorable, but some scenes is memorable from him. Uh, not a good guy also, that's all I'll say, but John Berthon here is awesome. Uh, he doesn't have a huge presence in this movie, that's why it's kind of disappointing for that part. But all I'll say is John Berthon's character, the way he portrayed it, totally fine. Uh, no problem, he wasn't bad at all. He was good, good part to the movie. The clubs. Uh, the clubs feel real. It doesn't feel like it's a stage thing. The directing through the clubs, like you're walking through the crowd and the camera's going through the crowd. Sometimes it's a fir first person mode just for a split second, like maybe two, three seconds. It's first person and it, you hear Zac Efron's voice and then it goes back to showing Zac Efron from that guy's point of view. So it definitely is uh, very cool directing from Max Joseph. Like, not None here is like the cinematography, like the way you see California, you see a big scale of it. It's, this wasn't made for a, a huge screen. This was made for, like, a medium score screen, regular screen. And, you know, the cinematography's fine. There's nothing in there where I'm like, this is the greatest thing in the world or anything. But it was totally fine. The directing, I think Max Joseph did a good job. Not a great job, but he, it was good for what the movie was going for. It's all about the heart rate to this music. About, like, the, the 128 beats per second. Or not second, but per minute. You gotta get people moving. You take over their circu circulatory system. And that's, like, that whole scientific lesson in there. I actually learned from it all. I was like, okay, they showed reggae, and then they showed, like, I was like, wow, I didn't know that. If I hope that's not bullshit. I hope that's a real thing. Now I know about that. And like I said, the second act, the middle part of the movie, like the, it's an hour and 40 minutes, so I say, like, the 40 minutes to an hour and 10, an hour and 15 minutes, like, that whole middle part was juicy. It had, it had the, 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 the juicy burger in there. It was pretty good. Uh, it, yeah, I enjoyed the middle part. You know, the first act, it took a while to get into it. Like, it took me literally 10, 15 minutes to get into the movie. But then after, you know, the middle part was definitely the juiciest part of this burger. So, I know, I'm using burger metaphors now. Now the cons to this movie. There are a, a, a lot of cons in here, which I'll get to. Some are stupid to you, some may actually... It's personal opinion, so... Not much John Bernthal in here. And also, John Bernthal's character, that whole subplot that the characters are working for him in that subplot, it tries to go somewhere, and then it doesn't. Like, I'm saying, as story-wise, for this hour and 40-minute movie, where did we go from point A to point B? Sure, he's not the best boss, but what did we get from watching all these scenes, or were these scenes pointless? His character, really, his subplot, like, John Bernthal was fine, as, fine, fine, but the way they wrote it, it was kind of like, Okay, they're just showing them getting jobs and they need money and everything. We get that. Like, re realtors and real estate and um, evacuated or evicted and all that. Okay, we get it, but it just didn't go really anywhere at the end. We were kind of like, well, that didn't, that didn't really... I kind of just wasted time there. We don't explore the supporting characters. Squirrel and etc. Johnny Weston's character, like, etc., etc. We didn't get to explore them. Like, why? How did they end up there? What do they want to do for a living? I, well, I guess the the one, the one wants to be an actor and everything. Like they end up doing, they end up growing up. Basically, is they have to grow up sooner or later. They can't be kids. You can be a kid because I mean, come on, you live in Hollywood. I live in Texas. Come on, you, you can be a kid forever. Don't don't use an excuse. You're gonna grow up. I live in Texas. Come on, you live in Hollywood. Goddamn you, selfish motherfucker. Either way, seriously, the supporting characters they're fine. Like they're funny. Some of them are really cool. One guy looks like the guy from Scream, the TV show. Kind of and like, MTV, whoa. Keeping it up, up, and here. But seriously, the supporting characters, they, they, you just don't... You don't care for them, really. You're just kind of like, they're there. Oh, they make me laugh. Ha ha, keep them on screen. But... They don't have a big presence in the movie, either, when you think about it. Like, Zach Efron's not a good friend in this movie. When you watch it, you're kind of like, he's not that good of a friend. He has his bro moments, and he just leaves them and abandons them, so you'll see if you see the movie. Uh, there's a lot of cliched parts in this movie that happens in all movies every single month. You have the the alcohol, and the hangover, and the drunk, and the girls taking off their bra, and the tits, and then jumping in the pool, and it's so cliched of a movie where it's kind of like, this movie feels like it could be, it made, like, 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 excuse me, it looks like it was made for like MTV or something, like, it's so like... 
teenage college cliche type of thing and that's where the audience is really towards it's not towards like if you're 50 40 go watch no escape with owen wilson go watch something serious of an action movie this ain't for like 50 60 year old this is more for the younger generation and i'm, I'm not saying I, you can watch if you want if you're 50 60 i'm just saying it's more your younger people are going to understand this more than the older generation is what i'm saying it's going to be more uh, soothing towards i guess my generation sadly i have to say that uh, there's a scene in here that didn't have no emotion. Now, in the characters, they had emotion. You'll know if what I'm talking about if you've seen it, but there's a part in this movie, and then they're in the third act, where it just, it's, it's emotional. In the theater, it's not emotional. It's kind of unexpected, but it's unexpected where you didn't really spend time with said, said thing. And you're kind of like, oh, okay, well, you know, okay, well... Are you going to go play at Summerfest now? Because, like, I'm waiting for you to play your big role because, you know, hurry up and do the, the music, you know, it's all about the music. So it's kind of like it just stalls for a second there, and it, it's kind of like, really, you could have made this movie an hour and 20 minutes and an hour and 40 if you could just take off for 20 minutes of this, uh, the, the, the excess fat, you know. Uh, John Perthall's character again didn't go anywhere. The subplot of the woman getting evicted, there's a subplot of a woman getting evicted, didn't go anywhere. Yes, there's a scene after the credits, not the full credits, but after, like, the credits and the, the blooper type of role. It, you're kind of like, oh, well, you know, that still doesn't explain John Bernthal's character with the girl and everything. Like, it doesn't explain. It doesn't really fit anywhere. It doesn't fit anywhere in the movie, really, because, oh, it's just showing he's a good guy. Oh, oh, he's a good guy, of course, because he's Zac Efron, you know? So, other than that, yeah... And at the end, it didn't feel deserving for the character of Zac Efron. It didn't feel deserving. It's like, I, I want you to have it, but you just don't, it doesn't feel deserving. Like, out of this hour and 40 minutes I spent with you, I don't feel like you deserve this yet. I feel like the whole movie, you were just kind of like, hey, look at this girl. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh. Do, 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 do. Hey, what's up? I'm Cole. Credits. And it's kind of like, I don't feel it. I don't feel that deservedness towards you. Uh, other than that, guys, I'm going to give We Are Friends, given a shockingly, a B minus. It's a good movie. I had fun with it in parts, but secondarily, it's a C. Uh, I'm going to give it an 8 out of a 10. And secondarily, a 7.25 out of a 10. But not very good. It's just good. On the verge of a see it again like am i gonna go buy it on blu-ray with the first day it comes out no i'm not but is it a movie worth watching yes on rental you know but if you're into the whole disc jockey and the whole music thing this is a movie for you it's definitely made for you um and check it out in theaters just for that if you're a huge fan of the this jockey zach efron he's good in here but it's not like it's worth the price of admission just for zach efron or Wes Bentley, and it's, I paid eight bucks for it, but it's not worth eight bucks. It's roughly worth four or five dollars, maybe at most. Uh, depends how your budget is, how much money you make, your income. If you want to spend eight bucks, go ahead. I mean, who's stopping you, America, man, go ahead. But still, it's a good movie. Is it the best movie of the summer? No, but for what I saw, I had fun. There are a few funny parts in it. There is some good dramatic tension in there but at the end it just didn't feel deserving for the character the other supporting characters are kind of like just up in the air and uh yeah i know this review went a little bit everywhere but at the end good worth watching on rental not in theater thank you guys so much for watching hope all of you enjoyed i'm sorry i take forever with this I'm, i gotta get into the details but without spoiling just get into that juicy juicy burger Next time I'll be watching, the next new review I'll be watching is a uh, transporter, the transporter refueled. So I'll see you all uh, the September 4th weekend. Thanks again for watching. Comment down below and let me know what did you think about We Are Your Friends. And uh, as always, the Spock be with you. How's it going everyone? I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to also check out my other videos. I do TV show reviews, movie reviews. I do also game reviews and game unboxings, movie unboxings. I do a movie podcast, a superhero podcast, much, much more. So go ahead and check out the channel. Thanks for watching again. See you all next time.